Daniel's not feeling well, and so just imagine like at, you're at a baseball game and uh, uh, there's some fat, out of shape guy in the third row eating nachos that uh, that that gets a call right in the ninth <laughs> inning, and they say, "Can you come in and pitch?" All right, so keep your expectations uh, low this evening um, in terms of uh, feeling. Hey, good evening. How are you? All right, so uh, you, All right, so I'm going to do a quick recap. Let's just make sure everyone has the, the worksheets for us to go through so that you can take notes uh, this evening. Okay. What we've been talking about in this fourth part of our uh, discipleship series uh, is what we call the, the everyday gospel and being able to talk about and to tell the story of the gospel. Okay? Because the gospel is not something that you, you just get over. It's not, it's not like, hey, I was saved at 15. I needed the gospel when I was 15 at that moment when I accepted Jesus, but now I'm over that and, and I've moved on to bigger and better things. That's, that's not the way it is, right? So here's your first blanks if you want to fill this out, right? Uh, belief in the gospel is, uh, is an ongoing expression of our ongoing need for Jesus. It never stops. In fact, it's what we just talked about with heaven, right? I mean, if you, if you want to summarize what is heaven in just a few words, it's like, it's Jesus being in the presence of the Lord. Um, that is always the ultimate goal. Now, there, there's lots of fun details to fill out, and that's what we've been doing. Uh, but you can never miss the main focus. Um, and that's the way that it is in our lives. And so... Uh, we, we want to be able to share the gospel in, in all aspects of life, this fluency, this, this term that we have uh, borrowed from this book here. Uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, idea in that it, it talks about being able to, to speak a language. And so we've been talking about uh, being able to, to say the language of the gospel in all aspects of life, okay? And so the gospel story reminds us uh, not only that we have been saved, what we have been saved by, right? But what we have been saved from. So let's fill that out for just a second. What, what do we mean when we say that uh, you have been saved by of the gospel? How have you been saved? Okay. How have you been saved? By the grace of God. What else? Fill it in. Jesus died and rose again. Yeah. Right? Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's how it takes place when we, when we place our faith in that. We're going to fill out some of that language uh, here in a moment. But what do we also mean that we've been saved from? Consequences of our sin. What are some of those consequences? Separation. Separation from God. Okay, so the scripture says that we're spiritually dead. What else? Okay, the ultimate consequence of, of the lake of fire that we would be permanently separated from God and from his presence. From the slavery of sin. Okay, the slavery of sin. Sin Sin isn't just like, uh, oh, you're going to get thrown in jail. You get slapped on a hand. Uh, like, like there's bondage that's with it. What is some of that bondage? Shame, Shame addictions, guilt, guilt. Depression. depression, anxiety, fears, 
right? Isn't fear such a common one? That, that kind of summarizes some of, some of these. All right. Underlying every sinful behavior and negative emotion is a failure to believe a truth about God and His story. Okay? So, we, we, it always starts with a lack of belief. So, if we've become obsessed with having to be in control, all right, what might we need to remember about God and His character that allows us to kind of relinquish control? Yeah, that God is sovereign, okay? The word here is great. He decided to use all G's, all right? <laughs> but if you want to put above it sovereign, right? That's what we mean with that word sovereign. That's a big theological word that we don't use very often, really about hardly anything else but God, uh, occasionally kings. Uh, but what does that word mean? What does that word sovereign mean? Supreme. Yeah, supreme, right? So if you use it over a king, right, he has complete authority and control. Okay. All right, let's look at this next one. Uh, when we've become paralyzed by the fear of man, okay, what have we forgotten about God? Well, it doesn't have to start with a G because I would never get it based off his word. What does the scripture tell us to do? Instead of fearing man, we should what? Fear God. Yeah, it actually says fear God, right? Like, you got to fear God. Don't fear man, fear God. All right, so what does that mean? That you can't be God is fear God. No, 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 no. Here he put glorious. That God is glorious. Yeah? That's a good word, isn't it? Awesome. Okay. All right. When, when we are tempted to look to other things for satisfaction, what have we forgotten about God? There it is. He's good. That God is good. God is the one who satisfies All right, and when we slip back into uh, attempts at workspace righteousness, what have we forgotten about God? His grace, right? That God is gracious. All right, so what we did last time, and I'm going to get you guys to share some of your homework assignment. Uh, Uh, but just, just to give uh, a summary here, uh, was uh, we're going to see four movements in the story of the gospel, okay? Telling the story of the gospel. And, and as with the idea of a language, okay, you need vocabulary. So the simple idea uh, of this final class is that you and I need to be so fluent in the language of being able to tell the gospel story that, uh, and, and what we're going to do over the, the series of the next three times after this, is we're just going to look at everyday occurrences in life and ask the question, how at work, or how with your family, or even to yourself, how do you preach the gospel to yourself? How do you how does the language become so much a part of you that you become fluent in it, okay? And so what we did the la last time is we filled out these first two sections with language of creation, okay? Language of creation. And then after we filled out some of that language, 
We wrote that out on the board, and then you were given the homework assignment to write your own paragraph, picking some of the vocab words that you really that excited you, that you were drawn to, those sorts of things. Okay, that that you want to use to to begin to incorporate in your life. All right, so. This is class participation time. Who wants to share uh, some of their paragraph uh, on creation? Yeah, now would be the time to do that. <laughs> no one? God created the heavens and the earth. Probably not one of them. The story of creation from the Bible is a true account of how God created the world and everything in it in six days and rested on the seventh day. It shows his incredible power and majesty as it occurs by his merely speaking all things into existence and creating man and woman in his image for his glory. Yeah, that was great. By the way, I can't spell, so I'm letting myself off the hook. Okay, so re remember uh, some of our key words that as we walk through, as we think about creation, okay? And she did a really good job of, of weaving in, and I was just picking out a, a couple of those uh, it was it was really good and rich. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to share? That was excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somehow. Well, that, that, does, that does come, that is going to be a transition thought, but yes. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's perfect. It's, it's uh, uh, that God has dominion, right? He's God. Okay. Yeah. I can't spell that. That spell correct, uh, spell check gets me every time on sovereignty. <laughs> Thanks. And that he created it, it was good and very good. Yeah, yes. That it was very good. Perfect. So this is a lot of the language we filled out last time. Okay? Now, uh, I, w I was thinking in... in uh, in preparation for tonight's class, um, you know, in the hour I had to prep this, uh, <laughs> was we got we to gotta look towards how are we going to use this, okay? And, and particularly, I mean, this is God's story, but, but think in, in terms of your interaction with people and how are we going to use this when you're at work or you're... Um, interacting with family members and, and things like that. And so uh, part of the uh, creation is the hook, okay? Uh, because, because we know the, the movement here. We know that man has fallen and man is, is, is lacking. Man has a hole inside of him. Before you get to uh, the darkness and the despair that you're about to unfold, there's, there's usually a hook, okay, that as you're interacting with people that you're going to want to use as a, as like I said, a hook. It's, it's, a, it's something that draws them in. So when I was thinking about that, um, I, I thought of 
I thought of really expanding this out in some of my vocabulary. And the reason is, is because, because I know the, the fall, in the fall, that uh, there's, there's going to be this hole, but simultaneously there's this deep, deep longing and desire in each of us for, uh, for so much more. Um, and so I, I was trying to think through other aspects where the scripture ex- expands on this, where you would say, look, how are we made in the image of God? Well, well when we create, right? When you create art, you are being like God. It's, it's the image of God coming out in you. And, and if this is going to be vocabulary, and as we're going to see, starting next week, there, there are going to be spots where we uh, are, are looking to engage people in conversation, okay? How, how is this idea something that you could then pick up on and engage in conversation? That you see someone who, who creates art or, or music, Yeah, but, but it is, that, that's, that's what we're keying in on, right? When I, when I see man make beautiful things, or it could be engineering, okay, and, and other things that, that man does, right? When we, when we write, when we sing, uh, when we imagine, Okay, when we invent new things, like we are being like God. And, and to pull that out in conversations and even to encourage it in other people, right? right? You don't have to start by beating them up. You know that's coming. With, and, and that's the Holy Spirit's job, right? To convict them of sin. So if, if when you meet people, if you can draw out, hey, did you know that God made you that way? I love the way that God made you. Do you know that creativity? I'm not creative like that. I see God in you when you, when you do that. What are you doing? You are, you are beginning the on-ramps to tell the story, right? It's the beauty of the soul. It's the beauty of the soul. That's exactly right. That God has made us in his image. And and so to be able to think through that in creation, in this first movement, it's very positive that God made things good. He made them very good. And we can still see traces of that. And we should press into it because those are going to be our hooks. Those are going to be our on-ramps, okay, into having important conversations about God. And his creation, his dominion, his sovereignty, how he makes things, that we can still see traces of that before we get to the fall. Okay. All right. Hopefully, we'll get a little more participation with the fall. <laughs> how many of you, or does anyone want to help uh, and, and give us your, uh, your paragraph for the fall? I need my teacher's pets right now. I told you guys, he asked me an hour ago, and he said, they will participate. It'll be great. Just pitch it to them. That's what he said. So you listen to the guy from Tennessee. Yeah, now would be a good time to, to share your your. your. Yeah, it's, there, it's, okay, and it's not how God intended it to be. And then you can yeah. disembowel yourself about how bad things are. Yeah. Yeah, in, uh, in, doing, in doing my own an hour ago before uh, in terms of, of this, I, I thought about 
some language that I would uh, weave into, uh, into a legitimate conversation with someone. And I wrote down, <coughs> man was deceived into questioning God's goodness. Man was deceived into questioning God's goodness. Also inherent, when you, when you think and you really meditate on what, what's going on with, in, uh, in Genesis 3 when Satan tempts him, he, he basically frames the question uh, in such a way that says, is God holding out on you? Is there something good over here uh, that, that, that God's holding out on you? He says, if you eat of that tree, you will be like God. Now, what's the problem with that statement? Well, one, they're already like God in the way that God wanted them to be like God. And so the question that is that has slipped in through the back door uh, is, is, is God holding out on you? Is there something better over here that would satisfy you more that God has not given you access to? This is a question of God's goodness. Is he holding out? Do, do people struggle with that still? Do we question God's goodness? Okay. Uh, and, and then ultimately, uh, the, the press in the fall and in the temptation is that we would determine good and evil for ourselves. Okay? If God is sovereign, if God has dominion, if God is the one who spoke, if God is true, then we must obey. But ultimately, our sin is our own declaration. Deep down, it's de-godding God. It's saying, I am my own God. I will determine what is right and what is wrong. This is what's inherent in, in sin. But I wanted to use language that I thought I would actually use in a conversation. Okay, I'm, If I'm in a conversation, I'm probably not going to say... Uh, a serpent tempted Adam to eat out of a tree. Probably not going to say that just because I don't think the... Con I, I'm probably going to use things like uh, that all of us are, are tempted and we are deceived to question God's goodness and to ask, is, is God holding out on me? And, and to declare our own good and evil? Yeah. Yeah. goodness, greatness, uh, sovereignty to, to fall, and we, we hooked him, or mm -hmm. her, uh, with, wow, you remind me of God with your creativity, and then the next statement out of our mouth is, yeah, but well, we screwed that up. I mean, how do, you, how do you make that transition from one column to the other? Because that's the key. Mm -hmm. You got them hooked, but now you got to transition them so they don't walk away or shut down. Right. So... I, I got that, but where's that bridge being an engineer? Sure. Uh, well, you don't want to point at them. You want to say, our world is broken. Right. And we're in it. Yeah, that's it. The world that they are the ones that sin is not correct. The world is correct, but we could point that at the sins of the fall. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, I think pointing out the fact that creation is not as it was originally intended to be. And uh, I, th I think the brokenness of the world is uh, a great hook and conversation starter as well. Everyone loves to lament over 
how the world's going to the hell in a handbasket and turn on the news and those everyone likes to talk about that. Now, you, you, can, you can use that as, look, God, God has created and this is the way God intended, but we clearly see that the world is broken. I, I think that's, that's great conversation to ask someone because they may come at it from different angles. They may come at it from suffering. They may come at it from... Uh, uh, from a political standpoint, there would be a million different things that they would say on why the world is broken. Okay? So, um, so basically the conversation may not be linear from creation to fall. It could but, be... But I think... I'm sorry. No, go, 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 go. Well, no, but I'm just thinking that you, when you start talking with somebody, you don't... You, if you're talking to them about their art or their music or their engineering... You know, you start with that part, and then you say, you know, it, it reminds me of God and that we are created in His image. So the last thing they said isn't that, um, of talking about them, the last thing we've said is that God designed the world this way. And then when we're talking about God, and then you can move over, I think yeah. you can segue over better than if you just said someone to someone how great their art is and it's a broken world. I, I think because it's at the bottom, you kind of flip-flops how the conversation is. Or yeah, 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 I just, I just. Yeah, I, I love when I see the image of God in a broken world. Don't you? Because it reminds me of the way that God made things to be, but it hurts my heart that it's not that way. I mean, those are, those are like, Transitions and transitions are the hardest. I'll tell you, uh, when it, when writing sermons, transitions is the hardest thing to do and and to to work in. I write out my transitions because they're so hard. Because otherwise, I might just fumble around up there and be like, "All right, uh, next uh, fall," <laughs> right? So thinking through those transitions and and trying to yes, uh, and so I gave you an example of, of how to do that and. And working those in in, in conversation and, and being able to think through and and maybe maybe it's something else. May, but as you become fluent in in seeing uh, the image of God, God's beauty and power and dominion. I mean, you, you could be uh, with a family member and watching the sunset in Hawaii and and just th- at that point really press into man. Don't you love when you can see uh, just just the power and the majesty of God that we can still see glimpses of that, right? That's gonna, those are going to be the hooks on how you naturally begin to engage in the, the gospel story, okay? The transition, all of that one might be, and it's really rare in our broken world to have these moments. You Okay, to determine good and evil for ourselves, uh, the fall, our sin, right, separates us. Yeah. Yeah, we had some really good words last time as we think through, right? So so think through ways that we can describe uh, those effects of sin in the fall. Because as you're talking about the broken world, the world is not as it, as it should be. You're, you're talking to someone who deals with lingering effects of sin. That, that shame, that hiding, that, uh, the, the brokenness that exhibits in, in so many different forms, right? We, we talked about, and I pressed you guys just a second ago, and we, we said things like, yeah, depression. It's good. All right. Okay, and so no one's going to share their thing. We got to keep moving. All right. Now, redemption. Or is it, what is his word? His word is rescue. All right. All right, rescue. Let us begin to build our vocabulary of 
rescue. As we're telling the story of rescue, okay, how do we, what is the story? What language do we need to use? Must we use? What do we like to incorporate? Okay. What would you say about Jesus? Bring in the lefty. Okay, Jesus, what do you mean by plan? Well, from the beginning, okay. God had this plan. Yeah, that, that, that God had, okay, it's God's plan. God had planned the rescue. Okay. I think that Jesus is God in the flesh. Yeah. All right, so, so we would say uh, he's God's son, um, obviously, you can work through scripture passages with description. Um, all right, God's son, and, and I also want to use, and it's tied to here uh, with plan. That is that God gave His son. Okay, so so that this was planned out. That that God gave His son Jesus, who came. He's the, he's the only one who could so fix it. God's son, God himself, yeah. was the plan rescue to get back to that state. That's good. That's good. There's only, right? We can't fix it ourselves. We've got to get, a conversation has to get to that point. I mean, people have to admit that they can't fix it themselves, at least in their thoughts. So that's mm-hmm. a really, I think, I'm, I'm being real opinionated. Oh, you're good. Sorry. It's great. That's Here's, here's why this is so good. I, I love your interaction. Never apologize for that. No one in here is thinking, gosh, I sure, no. Like, this is good. Here's why this is so good. We can't fix it ourselves. Does our world repeatedly say over and over and over again, you can fix it yourself? Mm-hmm. Have we defined it? <clears throat> yeah, I was doing a quick recap from last time. But yes, sin right here separates us from God. Right. Well, I mean, we've just we've spoken very general world, large categories, not you individual have transgressed the law of God. Yeah. Yes. Our sin and their sin separates them from God. The rescue came through a lot of pain. Okay. So, uh, real quick, the, the reason I think that this, this is so good is this is going to, you have to think through real conversations. We're not, do, we're not doing this just so you guys can uh, get a gold star because you, you read your, your thing or you refuse to read your thing to me in class, right? <laughs> you have to think through like real conversations, okay? And our world repeatedly says like, you can fix yourself. How does the world say they can fix themselves? Self-help, self-help right? Yeah. Just posit- positive self-esteem, right? That's what's going to fix you, right? Therapy. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Personal health. Right. Okay, you, you get your physical health, you get your financial health, uh, you get your mental health, right? All of that, but none of that can genuinely overcome our sin and our separation from God himself, 
Okay. And that's a good place, too, to bring back in that image because we are made in God's image. We have a long name for it. Which, I don't know, maybe that goes toward the next segue. But, you know, it's just that we know that we're broken and we don't want to be broken and, and we have a longing. And, and God knew that and he fixed it for us and Jesus is our image. Mm -hmm. Sin incurred in debt. Uh, we, we owe something that good deeds can't pay. Yeah. So this, this sovereignty, this dominion, like th this sin is, it's not just, it's not just a, a misstep whoopsie, right? You, you have, uh, have de-godded God. Uh, I didn't write it, I have it here, right? It's, it's, you, it is your own declaration that you will determine what is, is right and wrong and you will be your own God. But where has that left us? And where has that left you? And there is a debt because he is the king. He's the judge. He's the ultimate one, right? He, if, and that's why as you weave through in some of the language, and here's the deal. Different conversations call for different language, right? You can't say all of this in every conversation. Um, it, you can if you're teaching a class. Uh, but, you know, you're having lunch with someone. It, th this is... This has become fluent because all of these ideas are very important, okay? And so you might be having lunch someday, and it might be just time to sit with a coworker and talk about God is sovereign and He is king. And can I just tell you, sin is a, is a real debt. It's a real offense. Right? It's not something that just gets swept under the rug, okay? And, and that could be that conversation that day, right? Because... Oftentimes, uh, you, you, don't, you don't get sign sealed, delivered, everything all in one package that day, got them saved, went out and got them baptized, we're done. Okay? So uh, as you think with, with family members, right, pressing in with some of this language, hey, this language is rich. There, there are deep, deep concepts. There's a reason the Bible's this thick, right? There's a lot going on in there. Uh, so, uh, yes, in... in Figuring out how to, how to incorporate this. All right, so we can't fix it ourselves. Um, and, then, and then, John, you said... Uh, uh, rescue brings a lot of pain. Yeah, the, the, res the rescue came through, uh, through suffering. Good grief. Now, why is that? Expand this thought. What does it mean that the rescue came through suffering? Sin requires payment. Yeah, right. So he who knows sin became sin. Okay. He, he took our shame. He took our separation. Okay, and, and like this, this he took it so that so that we could could get on the other side, right? He took our shame. He took our separation. What other words or concept ideas as you think through rescue, as you want to unfold the beauty of your Savior to someone? This is where it's fun because, because the Bible is filled with so much imagery, right? It's beautiful. It's magnificent. <coughs> it's such a vast story. If we take the mass concept of debt mm -hmm. and we have a plan to give, we paid that debt. Yeah. Okay, Colossians 2, that you had a certificate of debt consisting of decrees against God. It was nailed to the cross. Okay, paid that debt. That's what, uh, remember, this is, this is the fourth part of a, of a long series that started with the first one, and that first one was the gospel. And there were some really rich words do you guys remember? What's the one that says your debt was paid? Yeah, 
Yes, atonement is in there. Yeah, propitiation. That's a big word, propitiation. Okay, uh, the word redemption, to redeem. Okay, the word redeem literally means to pay the debt. Okay, it's, it's uh, uh, to, to purchase someone out of slavery or a prisoner of war. You redeem and you have to pay that certificate of debt. Right? In that case, it's like it's a receipt. There's like, hey, this is how much that slave cost. Okay? Because either they're indentured servanthood of, of that's how much cost them to get in there or, or whatever. Okay? Yeah, yeah, and that's the ransom price, right? Okay, so I, I was thinking through for this some some rescue language that I that I love to uh, when I think of of the poetry and, and beauty of this, and we can meditate a long time on this, right? Uh, I was just thinking, uh, Adam hid in the garden, and Jesus presented himself, right? Because Adam hid in shame and Jesus uh, presented himself. Adam blamed anyone he could. And Jesus, when they came to capture him, he presented himself and he said, let them go. Let his disciples go. He protected them, right? Adam was like, Anybody but me, it's not my fault, right? But Jesus presents himself, he protects his people. Adam uh, took the fruit on a tree and Jesus hung on that tree to undo it, right? That's what it needed to undo it. And so uh, I, I just think the, the more you become fluent in the language, you, you, you start to be able to pull out like, I would say that in conversations because I want them to see the poetry and the beauty of, of what, what God has done, right? He planned it from the absolute beginning of uh, the world, from eternity past, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is, and and that's where I would I would recommend. Uh, um, yeah, there there are ways to work it in here if you uh, uh, if you were telling a fuller story of of the Old Testament in in the way that God has has revealed Himself and made these uh, these uh, moments of um, of redemption where, where you could have relationship, but those, those were just in part, and those were just in part. You, you, could, you could do it that way. It's, some of it depends up, upon the, the Bible literacy of the person you're talking to and, and how much you're going to go into in, in that moment. Uh, but yes, um, uh, that, the, the great way to do that is, is uh, because even though uh, even though the fall occurred, God began to issue his decrees on how he must be approached, okay? We weren't immediately wiped out. That's the good news. Praise God for his mercy. Uh, but then as you watch God unfold, how he must be approached, it is, it is only through the shedding of blood that there is any remission of sins, okay? Uh, and uh, I think that's Leviticus. It's either eleven seventeen or seventeen eleven. I never remember which one goes where. So you look it up twice until you find it. Okay. Other thoughts that we would say about rescue? It was a free gift. 
Yes, it's a free gift. Okay, you, you could use the idea here of substitution. Okay, free gift. Anyone have a verse memorized that talks about free gift? Amen. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, another thread that I had written la uh, on rescue was um, even while we were the enemies of God, okay, God showed his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I mean that's that's great language. It's a it's a great verse that could that could show you. It, it can certainly you you easily tie into the fall, um, how we've become enemies separated from God, and it was during that time Romans five eight while you were God's enemy, God showed His love for you, and that He gave His Son for you. Okay, all right, we got to move quickly here. Our last one. What's the word we're supposed to use? Restoration. Restoration. So what's some of the vocabulary that we need to know about the final movement? All right, by the way, this goes, this goes all the way from salvation, okay? What, this is what Jesus has done, okay? Death, burial, resurrection, ascension, okay? To now our salvation to glorification. Okay, what, what words, concepts uh, should we become familiar with for restoration? Okay. Okay, Danny, what do you mean by fellowship and relationship? Well, again, I'm into the transition. So over in the fall, we were separated. Separated from God, right? We, we have no fellowship, no relationship. Yeah, let's... And now we do through, through our rescue. Yeah. So we, we've... That, that separation has now been restored. Okay? Uh, uh, underneath that... Fellowship relationship language, what what would some language that you studied in like some of your identity language that would, would come forward about who you are now? Yeah. Okay. That, that, that you're an adopted son or daughter of God. Now, we when you when you think about like, like sitting across the table from somebody at work and like and telling them this, right? That that's some really good news, right? What about forgiveness in that? Yeah, our righteousness, our forgiveness. Okay, imagine describing what, is, what it's like to be clean. Okay, because, because here you were dirty, you were filled with shame, but here you're, you're made clean. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's walking with him. And, and I think a lot of times we got pretty well, I don't know why we just come up. 
Some of these words are pretty big, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, and, and so when you think of, of royal blood, you can tie it all the way back to, right, the king who has created has now made me to be his own. He's given his son for me, okay, to make me his own. idea of his eternal relationship. People that, um, those of us who have had personal experience with the process of adoption know that the judge told you at that time that you cannot disown this child. Um, he's yours, she's yours forever, and if you decide you don't want them, you cannot disown them. Well, God cannot disown us because he's adopted us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th th Nothing we yeah, and you, you're, you're tying it to adopted language, which is great uh, in, in the scripture right along the same lines, right? It, to know him is to have eternal life. Okay, I mean, to know that we have eternal life, guys. I'm alive, eternally alive because I know God because he's redeemed me. The restoration. Other areas? Other language? Spiritual. Okay. Yeah, part of this sanctification journey, right, is going to move us towards being fruitful. Okay. Now, in plain language, what do you mean by that? Like that's, that's it's good biblical language, uh, but if you're talking to someone who doesn't know the Bible and you said, I'm fruitful... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love joy, peace, patience. So what, uh, what we're saying, like, so here uh, we are separated and we're not able to fix ourselves and we're not able to walk in step with God and we're not able to even walk the way that he desires us to walk. But here with his spirit inside of us, we are able to walk the way he wants us to walk and to be, yeah, there's a whole new identity okay we're able to be obedient we're able to walk out in newness of life any other words concepts huh okay whole Yeah. And started with that, you know, and how we're separating, how we're broken, mm -hmm. and uh, how we're searching. We have that hole inside of us, and when we fill it with all this junk. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's that separated, emptiness. that hole, that empty. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, and, and I love that. That's, that's been woven through uh, uh, theology for many years is this idea of a God-shaped hole inside of you and, and you cram so many other things down inside and, it, and nothing ever satisfies. Uh, but that... You, Yeah. It's so true, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you're right. That is one of the things that I keep in the back of my mind anytime I'm dealing with someone, okay? Uh, in, in Romans uh, chapter 1, uh, when Paul, uh, Romans chapter 1 and 2, the end of chapter 1 and on into 2, he gives a, a very complex, very Pauline-like, uh, he's building a case, an argument for why uh, everyone already knows there's a God, okay? Um, and one of his arguments is that because God placed that knowledge inside of each of us, this innate knowledge of himself is inside each of us, and creation speaks to his invisible attributes, his eternal power, right? It's clearly seen being understood through what has been made. And then he moves on to... Uh, uh, he talks about the conscience in chapter 2, that every man has a conscience and he knows he fails his conscience. And then at the end of chapter 1, he also says that every man knows that there is a judgment day and that he fails judgment day. He knows all of that. That's the way Paul argues in Romans 1 and 2. So I keep that knowledge in the back of my mind and I, I try and pull it out in conversations because I believe those scriptures. And so when I'm conversing with someone, I'm, I've sat down with someone uh, uh, and, and they said, well, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in anything. And, and we walk through and then halfway through the conversation, he says, uh, well, all right, well, I'm really agnostic. And, uh, and then, uh, but I, I just kept pulling and kept pulling. And, and by the end of that conversation, he turned to me, he said, so tell me, when, when have you experienced God? And I thought, that's right. Because, because the entire conversation, it's like, I know that God has placed this knowledge of himself inside of you, and you see it, in, like, I know all of this. Because I just believe what God said, right, what Paul wrote in, in chapters 1 and 2. And so I'm just going to speak to you and have that conversation that way. And so that's, that's to your point, right? There, there is this, this empty, whole void inside of us because we've been made to know God. And so just when I converse with you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that out, right? So how would that happen naturally in a conversation, okay? So we're, we're talking about this God-shaped hole inside of us. What would a conversation look like, a, a really plausible one, where you might be able to, to use that and, and to enter, enter into a gospel story. What might be a common situation? Life choices. Life choices. All right. We see people doing what? Making those bad choices, cramming those things down deep inside. What, what, yeah, whether it's, whether, it's a, uh, whether it's someone else, okay, where you're like, you know, you're, sit, you're sitting around the lunch table and your coworker starts gossiping. Can you believe what she did? Okay, right? But it's a perfect opportunity to, to talk about, you know, I, I just think she's trying to, to fill a void that's inside of her that only God can fill. Oh, now you've, you've shifted the conversation and you're able to start yeah, and you've moved to the spiritual, right? I, I think she's, I think she's just trying to fill a void that, that only God can fill. Do you ever do that? I do that. Yeah, I always like to self-deprecate. Right? I do that. Yeah, yeah. I've sinned. Can I tell you some of my sins? By the way, when I, when I do some, a lot of my gospel presentations and stuff, I hand them a book and I tell them to write their sins in the book, all right? Uh, but then while they're doing it, it's, I, I'm like, hey, can I just tell you some of my own sins uh, that I know are in my book? So anyways, fluency. All right, so here's your assignment. 
and Daniel's going to call on you next time. <laughs> so you better write your assignment. Yes, you got another word, Sherry? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that great? And, and with a lot of these concepts, right, you can, you can press this out. There's so much language. There's, there's much rich, rich language here about father and being adopted, royal blood, okay? Like this rich storyline, okay? A, a whole other one is that you're a, you're a new creation, right? Through the Holy Spirit, He's made me a new creation. My thoughts are not my old thoughts, okay? He's made me new. He's He's taken out a heart of stone. He's given me a heart of flesh, right? Uh, uh, Colossians, you, you've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. There, there's lots of rich, rich imagery um, that, that's woven throughout Scripture and, and really heavy in the New Testament. Like, And you can chase those and chew on it and make it... Uh, the whole point of this is that you make it usable, that you make it yours so that you feel comfortable. And we talk about real situations about how you can take someone's bad life choices to talk about, hey, I think there's a hole in their heart that, that God, only God could fill. Right? Those are the types of things that we're looking for to be able to weave this into everyday life. Okay?